This original WSRE presentation is made possible by viewers like you. Thank you. Look, Mittens, you're not following me. See, at first, it looked like a tragic accident. One man was skateboarding down the street while eating a chocolate bar. Coming the opposite way, a woman was walking down the street just minding her own business, eating peanut butter right out of the jar. Of course, there was a horrible collision. Both the man and the woman were seriously injured. But just before the man slipped into shock, he addressed the woman angrily, shouting, you got peanut butter in my chocolate. And before she succumbed to blood loss, she said, you got chocolate in my peanut butter. In their last moments, both managed to take a bite, and of course it was magnificent. Yes, they both died, but the inadvertent snack that they created lives on forever. Oh wait, we're on, hey, hey. Hello my friends, and welcome once again to Nightmare Theater. I'm your host, the Baron Mondo Von Doren, and here with me is Mittens the Werewolf. We are discussing great things that came from terrible accidents while we await the biggest accident of all time, El Sapo de Tempesto, to arrive with tonight's movie. I'm not sure where he could be. He really hey, should be... Sorry I'm oh late. I was gosh. just finishing up the laundry. Say, boss, you don't mind wearing pink underbreeches, do you? Wait, what? Never mind. As always, I have a simple question for you. Do you have a movie for this evening? Ah, uh, geez, you know what? What with the washer flooding at the laundromat and my record-breaking streak on a Galago machine, I totally spaced out on a movie. But hey, I started carrying this in my pocket at all times in case something like this happens. It's another episode of Radar Men from the Moon, which, you know, I'm still sad to say does not feature Gary Berghoff of TV's MASH. And that's blatant false advertising if you ask me. Just go find us a movie. While the masked moron goes off to find us a suitable film, why don't you wa folks watch this week's episode of Radar Men from the Moon? It's as good a time killer as anything, I suppose. So, the people on the moon are planning a direct attack on the world as soon as their saboteurs have softened up our defenses. What do you think their chances are of succeeding? You've seen what the ray guns have already done here. If they send out a fleet of rocket ships armed with atomic weapons like those, or perhaps even larger ones, it would be difficult to hold out against them. Perhaps our best move would be to attempt an attack on the moon. We'd be at a terrific disadvantage. I don't even see how we could land ships there in face of their ray guns. We just can't sit here and wait to be attacked. Oh, of course not. Reddick the ruler told me they plan to attack after their saboteurs here have accomplished their mission. If we could round up the gang operating here, we may stave off the attack until we are better prepared to meet it. Yes, that's certainly the first thing to do. You know some of the saboteurs, don't you? Yes, well, that is by sight. And my flying suit gives me a considerable advantage in running them down. Right. 
I'll have you notified whenever there's another attack. In the meantime, we'll put every available man on this case. Goodbye, Cody. Goodbye, sir. I'll have this ray gun finished in a short time now. So you'd better arrange to get another truck to mount it in. OK, but I'll need some more money. You'll have to sell some more of those jewels you brought down from the moon. I have only a few of them left, and I must keep those for an emergency. It will be necessary for you to take up your career of bank robbery. Not me. I'm already on parole for that. I know. But you would be wise to continue to obey my orders. Your more recent activities would be of extreme interest to the authorities. Will you need someone to help you? Yeah, but they'll have to do the dirty work. Of course, I'll go along to check on them. Very well, make your arrangements at once. Select a bank which is located in a not too heavily patrolled area. Something went wrong. must have more money. You've got to get it somehow. Not by any more bank jobs. I'm too hot in that business now. We'll have to figure out something else. I'll radio the moon. Perhaps Reddy can advise us. Krog calling Reddy. Reddick. Krog calling Reddick. Come in, Krog. I have to report that our scheme for obtaining money was a failure, Your Excellency. Can you suggest some plan that might be more successful? I think I can. From what I hear of activities on Earth, kidnapping important persons and holding them for ransom has proved highly profitable. Commando Cody, who flew his rocket ship to the moon, is very valuable to the defense organization of his country. I suggest you select him. An excellent idea. We shall carry it out at once. It'll be a rough deal, but a lot safer than robbing another bank. Of course. Commando Cody should be worth at least $100,000. Shall we bring him here? No. Hire a plane and take him to...
Will you tell us where Cody is? I don't know. Why don't we grab her and use her to trap Cody? That's an idea. On your way, sister. Wait a minute. Those same two men who wrecked the ray gun, they came after you. Where's Joan? I don't know. Maybe they took her with them. Two men and a woman drove away from here just as I came in. They were too far away to be recognized, but it must have been them. Police headquarters. Okay, I'll tell him. The police found out that the car went to the east side airport and a man took off with Joan in a chartered plane. They left just a few minutes ago. If I'm lucky, I can catch them. Welcome back. Well, that was yet another episode of Radar Men from the Moon. There really isn't much to say about it, is there? Every week, it's the same thing, over and over. Speaking of things I'm over, I wonder where all Sapo is with tonight's movie. Hey, 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 boss, here I am, and you know what? I think I may have found a good one tonight. I'll be the judge of that. Gamera the Invincible. Well, I can't say I hate this one. I don't love it, but I don't hate it. So it's kind of like how you look at me, right? Not at all. Well, what, what, can you tell me what this movie is about, boss? Well, without spoiling it for you, it's about a giant flaming turtle. Gamera the Invincible was released in 1966 and has a pretty good cast. There's character actor Dick O'Neill, who you'll recognize from primetime TV staples like Barney Miller, One Day at a Time, Cagney and Lacey, Falcon Crest, and more. 
Some of you might also recognize Brian Dunleavy, who has a huge resume of films dating back to 1923. Some of the films he made are even classics, including 1939's Beau Jest, in which he was nominated for an Academy Award. In addition to the Japanese actors that round out the cast, there's one more actor of note, Alan Oppenheimer, who plays Dr. Contraire in the film, who has a long career in TVs and movies, and particularly voice acting. He played both Falcor in the film Never Ending Story and Skeletor on TV's animated He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. His most recent role was as Old Timer in Toy Story 4. So is this a good movie or not? I wouldn't say it's good necessarily, but it's an important film in the pantheon of Japanese kaiju films, which translates as Strange Beast. It was the only Gamera film shot in black and white. There have been 12 Gamera films since 1965, with the most recent released in 2006. Well, well, tell me more about this kaiju business. I've never heard that word before, but you know what? A lady once called me a strange beast now that I remember. I, I bet. Kaiju films are great and very culturally significant in Japan. Think of guys in giant rubber monster movie suits. And some, some other kaiju characters that you may know are Godzilla, Rodan, Mothra, and Gorgo, just to name a few. So tell me what happens in this particular movie, boss. Basically, there's a lot of people bickering over whether Gamera is real, and then you'll see Gamera walking around breaking things. And there's a guy with really, really weird hair, even weirder than yours. Wow. Some film some scholar swears he looks like a Japanese Colonel Sanders. Oh, I gotta see that, boss. Well, let's get to it then. Sit back, relax, as we present Gamera the Invincible here on Nightmare Theater. <laughs> A ship gropes through the ice fields of the Arctic. The expedition, with American and Canadian cooperation, seeks an open water route across the top of the continent, Henry Hudson's fabled Northwest Passage. There are no fables in the objective of Dr. Eiji Hidaka, the expedition zoologist. Ashore with two companions to survey the life of the region, they approach an Eskimo village, innocently unaware of the fabulous experiences ahead of them. I'd hate to live in cold like this all the time. These people have developed special adaptations, Mr. Ayagi. Uh huh? Well, I hope my cameras don't freeze. Welcome. Welcome. We have heard of your expedition, Doctor. Welcome to Okolod. Welcome. Don't you think so? Yeah. What are Russian jets doing here? The border is almost a thousand miles to the west. I hope the shore party returns soon, sir. I don't like the looks of things. Are the ice conditions changed? No, sir. Just a feeling. Plane. Hmm. There they are, above the port beam. We'll notify air defense. yourself no trespassing but you shouldn't stop a guy for trying maybe it's cold outside it's right gorgeous you gotta thaw out now there's a south sea island picture direct hall tonight tropical shadows dulcet sea ripples muted mandolins and me with popcorn yet would you do me the honor maybe if you keep your buttery claws to yourself remember that airmen don't drool they obey excuse me captain yes the general yes Make it fast, Hopkins. This just came in. Thank you. What is it, Captain? General, I thought you'd better see these reports. They just came in, sir. Has this been confirmed? Yes, sir. We just intercepted a message from the Japanese explorer ship Chitaramaru. Thank you, Captain. What is it? What's wrong? Four UFOs headed toward our missile sites. Lovell, I want direct contact with air defense immediately. Yes, sir. Lieutenant, 
Have there been similar reports from other command posts? No, sir. Well, ride herd. Yes, sir. Clark. Yes, sir. Why don't you get me General Arnold in Washington pronto? Right away. General, we've made contact with their defense. This is General O'Neill. Do you read me? Yes, sir. This is Hawk Leader Foster. Affirmative. Foster, four unknowns have been traced to your area. Altitude 4,000 feet, flying north, northeast. A latitude of 84.27, east longitude 176.58. You will intercept and conduct them to base. If they resist, you will use plan Skylark and destroy. Roger. Captain, what is it? Russian planes are now American. Trouble, huh? Real trouble, yes. Well, Simpson? Still no reports of unknown from our other command post, sir. Could be their planes have flown off course, General. It's happened before. Perhaps. Washington, sir? The White House? The President. He was with General Arnold when the... Uh... No need to explain it, Lieutenant. O'Neill speaking. Yes, Mr. President. Yes, sir. That's exactly the way it is. No, sir. Only if the unknowns resist. Yes, sir. I quite agree with you. Yes, sir. I will call you directly. Red alert. Identify, identify. What is your nationality and flight plan? If you do not acknowledge, we will open fire. Identify, identify. Answer immediately. What is your nationality and flight plan? Clear for action. Fire! nuclear bomb could cause a blast like that. You're right. It was one of those jets we saw. And here I stand staring at that cloud when I ought to be taking a shot at the ear. Uh, a great news photographer I am. Yes. Do you realize what would happen, though, should that cloud come toward us? No, Mr. President. 
I am aware of the need for restraint, sir. Yes, sir, we'll stay on red alert until we receive further orders. Goodbye, sir. Well, the Russians insist their planes flew off course accidentally. Electronic interference. Oh, excuse me, sir. I mean, they couldn't have mistaken the area. I bet they were photographing our missile locations. Oh, one plane maybe, Lieutenant, but not four. No, headquarters believes they did fly off course accidentally, then realized what had happened and fired on our planes in order not to be forced down. Oh, our boys have done it on occasion, Lieutenant. We all know that. Clark. Yes, sir. You had any luck in raising that Japanese ship? No, sir. No air defense since you ordered them back. Our communication system is blacked out. The explosion, sir? It's unlikely. There must be something else causing the interference. Keep on trying, Clark. Yes, sir. <sighs> this just doesn't make sense. Love will get more interceptors up there. I want to find out what's going on. Yes, sir. Oh, Sergeant Embers. Yes, General? Would you give me a cup of coffee, please? Black, no sugar. And you better make another pot. It looks like a long day. Yes, sir. What's the matter, Chuko? I don't know, Doctor. I can't reach the ship or anyone else. I can't get anything but static. <clears throat> Interference from the bomb, Doctor? I would imagine so. We'd better start back at once. Yes. Right. Goodbye, Chief. Thank you. Goodbye. Wait. Please, Dr. Hidaka, you look, you take his very old stone about cloud of death. It's a primitive carving of a proto -Kilonian. A what? An ancestral turtle, like the leatherback. Tell me, Chief, is there a legend connected with this? Yes. Old story of death and evil things that happened of Gamera. <laughs> Gamera, you call it? This Gamera is obviously an object of terror. There's a peculiar pattern in the background. Looks almost like waves, doesn't it? Mm. Let's ask the chief. Is that what they are? I do not know. Only that it is evil and very frightening. I see. I have a feeling that this is something very significant. And that pattern symbolic of something else? Yes, I believe it is. This is not the usual way that Eskimos depict the sea. But what else could it be? I mean, turtles live in water, so that would make sense. Well, perhaps you were right. Still, I think there's much more to this than meets the eye. The cloud is spreading. But why should any of those planes be carrying an atomic bomb? They don't trust each other. That's why they stay on the alert. Look there. Contact Captain Foster, sir. He reports the Chitteramaro destroyed. All that remains is a huge crack in the ice and debris. What? No sign of survivors, sir. Now, Foster said that ship was beyond the area of the explosion. Now, what happened? Well, sir, I, I... I don't exactly know how to explain his report. It's just that... Well, sir, he says... All right, Lovell, this is no time to get tongue-tied. Now, let's hear it. Captain Foster insists that after he was separated from his group, he saw a giant turtle walking away from the area where the Chitteramaro was last sighted. A huge creature, 150, maybe 200 feet tall. He circled the area to take another look, but it was gone as if it had blown away. Well, now, now that's what he says, sir. The captain's kidding. A giant turtle? He must have been working too hard. That's one we haven't heard before. All right, Sergeant, get back to your duties. Yes, sir. 
Now, look, Lovell, I don't know what the hell is going on here, but we're going to find out. Now, I want a full report on this hallucination, and I also want a helicopter over that disaster area to see if there are any survivors. Maybe some people are sure whatever happened, happened. Yes, Sergeant sir. Embers. Yes, sir. I want you to contact General Yadasaka in Tokyo. Now, inform him of what has happened, that we're doing all possible to rescue survivors. Also, General Arnold in Washington. Tell him it is absolutely imperative that he meet me. Coded instructions will follow. Yes, sir. A giant turtle. And now, back to the second half of the discussion and your host, Mr. Standish. I'm very happy about it. Hello, I'm J.G. Standish, along with my guests. The noted zoologist, Dr. Emery Contraire, author of The Factual Basis of Legends. And on my right, this network's genial science editor, author of such books as Non-Science or Nonsense, Jules Manning. Our subject, the giant turtle gamera, certainly one of the most controversial subjects of our time. Dr. Contraire, earlier in our program, you stated the belief that gamera could in fact exist, while Mr. Manning disagreed rather vigorously. And I still do. This theory of Dr. Hadakas is pure science fiction, a figment of an unbridled imagination. <laughs> Mr. Manning, any theory until proven appears unbelievable to the ignorant. Dr. Hadaka's conclusions are based upon a life study. Now, let me restate that uh, turtles, porpoises, or scientifically, colonians, appear constantly in the most ancient texts. Now, for example, the uh, Greek Terribulia mythology that lived in fire, and uh, also the uh, Pyrabola of Pliny. What are you trying to prove, Doctor? And that to a scholar, uh, there is more than just a casual basis for Dr. Hidaka's conclusions. Now, we know for a fact that a mere million years ago or so, the gigantic Kalasakalis Atlas plodded over the hills of northern India. The largest turtle ever known, a link to the more distant past. Now, how gigantic were turtles a hundred million years ago, or even two hundred million years ago? I'd like to discuss the conflicting newspaper report. So, so you and the eminent Dr. Hidaka conclude that this Gamera creature has been hibernating underground for 200 million years until now, when he decides to take a stroll. <laughs> oh, Dr. Contreras, you do have a sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm simply advancing the theory uh, that the uh, great granddaddy of all turtles could have reappeared, released from its tomb of ice by the explosion of the bomb. Now, you may blithely ignore the statements of Dr. Hidaka, if you wish, However, I note that you haven't offered a more reasonable explanation for the total destruction of the Chittaramaru. If you'll get down from your pulpit for one minute, I'd like to ask you why Washington is so silent about all this. Or do you know more about it than the government? It would not be the first time Washington has kept the truth from the public, whether it be flying saucers or gamera. Oh, so now you believe in flying saucers, along with 200-feet turtles that survive atomic bomb explosions. <laughs> of course, we all know there really is a Santa Claus. Oh, Dr. Contreras, every time you bray, you make a bigger jackass of yourself. Jules, please, we're on the Mr. Standish, I demand an apology. I've devoted my life to science. Gentlemen, you won't get no apology from me, Contreras. I prefer to You have no scholarships to back your arguments. You have no arguments, Gentlemen. only invective. Read, 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 read Virgil's Laocoon. Read Paradise Lost, the ravings of a lunatic. Read of the Pyrites, the fire without and the frost within. Read, you ignorant ape. Read what intelligent men have written for thousands of years. What did he call please. me? Jules, please. He called me an ape? No, Gentlemen. Not merely ape. Quiet. Please Ignorant remember that ape. we're on Why, the... you? Remember that we're on the air. How dare you call me an ape? Where'd you get your diploma? Made in Japan? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm afraid that we are on time. I hope you'll be all together all next week for another conversation. What do you expect to make out of this? I'd like to see who you are. You'll be here. You'll be here. This is Arnold Oppenheimer, Skeletor. And you're watching Nightmare Theater. I hope you're enjoying tonight's movie. I'm, I'm not one for insults, but boy, those two are certainly creating a hostile work environment, aren't they? It's a shame a simple discussion over a simple matter had to degenerate into childish name-calling and shameless overacting. Sapo, you're often wrong in the office. What, what did you make of that scene? Hmm? 
Well, well, I wasn't really paying that much attention. It just looked like two guys yelling at each other. The topic was the existence of this Gamera character, and all of a sudden they were yelling at each other. But boss, I gotta tell you, I was checking the suggestion box, and it looks like Mittens has submitted a request. Wait, we have a suggestion box? Yeah, it looks like it. Well, we're in the middle of something right now. Can it wait? I don't think so. It looks like Mittens really wants to switch up the weekly menu. He says it's very important that the current weekly menu is not adequate or proper. That's insane. He, he doesn't think so. What does he want to do? Well, first, first he is advocating a switch in terms of our dinner schedule. He wants to move uh, jellyfish popovers from Monday night to Tuesday night. But as you know, Tuesday night is, is already starting pot pie night. And I'm not even going to tell you what he wants to do with fish stick Fridays. He says that would be better and he has submitted a treatise on why that is. This is ridiculous. I created and crafted this menu plan and I'm a certified menu expert. Let's see his menu making degree. Was it purchased by mail? Well, he disagrees with you, boss, rather vigorously, and, and he still does, apparently. Look, I'm an expert and he's not. The menu is based on an ancient method that was vetted by some of history's greatest thinkers. He disagrees, apparently. I see. Well, I would suggest that Mr. Fancy Pants peruse my cookbooks and read my monthly food blog. Read it. Read it, you ignorant ape. Read what intelligent men like me have written for thousands of years on the subject of menu planning. Boss, that's a little unfair calling him an ape. You know he is a werewolf. I didn't call him an ape. I called him an ignorant ape. And I demand an apology. I've devoted my life to menu planning. Uh, he, says, he says you'll get no apology from him. He says breakfast for dinner works better on Saturday than Sunday. And any fool like you can see that. He's got nothing to back up his arguments. In fact, he's got no argument, only invective. Uh, what does that word mean, boss? Oh boy, you're as dumb as he is. Well, maybe we can table this discussion on dinner and instead focus on breakfast. Looks like he wants to switch his, his, his pancakes to waffles and from bacon to turkey bacon. We'll do nothing of the kind. Let's just get back to the movie while I, gain, while I regain my composure. Turkey bacon? What, what are you talking? That's insanity. Would you care for a magazine or newspaper, sir? Oh, thanks. You're very kind. You're welcome, sir. Do you suppose there's any connection between this and what happened to the Shidori Maru, Doctor? I'm personally inclined to believe there is, yes. Although we don't know what happened to the ship. And then the radio blackout was that mere coincidence. And those reports General O'Neill told us about Dr. Hidaka I think there is a connection between them somehow. I'm sure of it. And far-fetched as it seems, I'm convinced all this has something to do with Kamara. You mean you believe such a beast might really exist? Of course, you're the scientist and I'm just a layman doctor. But still, after all, except for the pilot's report and the Eskimo stone, there's really nothing to go on. Still, you can't just discount all that evidence. No, you can't. To do so is just dangerous and foolish. I'm afraid Gamera is real. A creature like that. Do you realize the amount of, amount of damage it could cause? Of course I do. In civilized areas, it would be capable of destroying whole towns. No. Mm -hmm. Well, you convinced me, Doctor, anyway. Let's hope General Arnold can convince the people in Washington. Take this downtown, Mr. Jones. Type of the reporter that you did. Thank you very much. Another? Gentlemen? I think we know why we're here. Let us not waste any time. General Arnold, we'd appreciate your report. Yes, sir. In addition to our initial findings, huge footprints, not unlike those of a turtle leading from the area of the explosion to the exact spot of the destruction of the ship and also where Captain Foster of our air defense claims he saw the giant turtle. And during the last 13 hours, we have seen the reliable sightings of flying saucers, all fitting the identical description, starting over Nome, Alaska, proceeding to Saskatchewan, on to Toronto, London, Munich, Warsaw, and now Moscow. General, are you inferring that these sightings of UFOs are related to the reports of a giant turtle, a 
horrendous monster right out of mythology? I'm inferring nothing, Senator. I'm reporting facts as we know them. And I might add that if UFO continues its pattern, it will be sighted next over Japan. I would estimate in five or six hours, or shortly before Dr. Hidaka is scheduled to land at Tokyo. Dr. Hidaka? Does he have some standing in world science councils? I've never heard of them. And I'm considered expert enough to head committees on nuclear fission and the like. This man should not be permitted to terrify the world with such distortions unless he is qualified to throw some light, some ray of light on these incredible reports. And the point is that Dr. Hidaka is eminently qualified. I have examined all the reports, including the transcript of the conversation between General Arnold and Dr. Hidaka shortly after the zoologist was rescued by one of our helicopters. It is evident that he is a logical man and one who relies on facts. And from what he learned about Gamera as a result of his research and the evidence at the scene of destruction, I respect his conclusions. Whether his knowledge is derived from science or mythology, both extensive. Yet, Mr. Secretary, you must agree that until more logical explanations are available, the public should not be informed of this factual evidence of supposed footprints of supposed monsters. That decision was made by the Commander-in-Chief. I do know that if Gamera exists and did survive an atomic explosion, our world is about to face a calamity of enormous proportions. Well, I, for one, will not be coerced by this schoolboy myth of flaming dragons. And frankly, Mr. Secretary, I am disturbed. I am deeply disturbed to see that you have decided to go along with these alarmists. Are you, Senator? Well, from the facts, I am quite concerned. Deeply concerned. And so is the President. General Arnold, has Dr. Hidaka offered any advice? No, sir, there was none he could offer until he knows more about the creature. Gentlemen, I think we're in for a time of it. General Arnold, you're relieved of all duties at the command post and will take this assignment, the Gamera operation. Report directly to me. Yes, sir. Now, gentlemen, if you will excuse us, the president is waiting. The only three known survivors of the ill-fated exploration ship Chidori Maru, Dr. A.G. Hidaka and his two companions will arrive in Tokyo tomorrow. Mr. Kurai. Ah, Mr. Oweda. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I was on my way to see you. What's wrong? Has Toshio been misbehaving at school? No, not really misbehaving exactly. Here, look at this. Oh? Oh, no. Not more turtles. Yes. It would seem your brother has some sort of obsession about turtles, Miss Sakurai. Mm. I know how children are. They all love to collect pets and things. But this goes beyond that, so I thought I ought to see you. You mean it's interfering with his work? Yeah. So much so that if he continues, he could be expelled. Of course, I understand how lonely it is for him in that lighthouse out there without any friends. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. It is very hard on a little boy his age. Yes, I know it is. Still, you will speak to him about doing better at school, won't uh -huh. you? And I'm so sorry he has caused you this trouble. Not Good at day. all. Good day. <sighs> Toshu and his silly turtles. Did you rest well, Father? Mm hmm. Do you like working at night? Well, there's not much need for lighthouses during the day, is there? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> May I be excused?
Tosho? Come here. What are you up to, Tosho? Are you going to feed your turtle? Oh, Father. Yes? Could you come here a second? Yes, what is it? Toshio, your sister and I understand your love for your pet turtle, but we want to talk to you about it. Come out here. Come, Toshio. You have to learn to make friends with people, as well as animals, Toshio. Your turtle is very nice, but you have to have other friends, too. Mm -hmm. Set him free, Toshio. It would be better for him to return to the lake, and better for you to forget about turtles. Listen, if you promise to get rid of that turtle, I think Father will buy you something, anything you like. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will. Hmm? What would you like most, Toshio? Tell me. You want me to tell you what I would really like? What is yes, it, Toshio? Yes, tell us. What is it? To keep it. Toshio, I want you to set him free. If you don't, no boy or I'll do it for you. It would be a lot nicer, wouldn't it, if you went out yourself and let him go? Listen to me, Tokyo. I realize that this may seem cruel. It is, but I'm doing it for your sake. You do understand, don't you? Uh -huh. mm. Apparently he's gone back in the ocean. But how do I get down here on the ground? It was a miracle, Tosio. Gamera caught you and put you down. Huh? Gamera put me down? Yes. You're safe. You're safe. Thank goodness. <laughs> Nightmare Theater salutes Tokyo, Japan. Population one very angry flaming turtle and a kid who apparently loves him. Salute!
No, listen to me. You're not. You're not. You're not following me. I'm, I'm trying. Ozzy Osbourne was the right, lead covers. singer of Black Sabbath. He was. You'll but then he left, he left. He became a solo artist, and then Ronnie Say James hello. Dio Ronnie became James the, lead, the lead singer of Black okay, Sabbath. I got it now. Whoa, 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 whoa! Once again, whoa, whoa. we're gonna have to talk about this. this. I don't know if this is in your lease that you can have weapons in here. Yeah, it's a little, we'll see what that, I mean, that's a nice looking gun. But what? So, uh, oh, hello again. Uh, welcome back. And we're here with the curator from the. Merrill Movie Museum. Once again, we've made our way down to the sub, 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 sub basement here at the TV station. And curator, take it away. What do we have tonight? So this little baby is a hero necromonger rifle yeah. from the Chronicles of Riddick. Now, when we're talking about props and we say the word hero, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's a piece that was used by the hero. That means it's meant to be seen up close on screen. Ooh, so there's like a me. lot more detail that's put into a piece like this because at some point it's going to be seen by everybody 20 feet high close up on screen so you can look at at this piece and just see the amount of intricate work this is real metal this isn't wow. rubber or plastic or anything like that that you would see in that something is, that's that would real be a background metal. piece that's, 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 all this is real metal with all kinds of detailed uh little decoration Ooh. real plastic uh, tubing going through here. Mm. Uh, the other thing that makes this particular piece very interesting, and was, of course we've got the rifle, so we've got the stock on it as well, but it lights up. Oh my so gosh. that was built with a lighting effect in it that, that they would in, then enhance in the film using computer graphics or whatever other forms of special effects. Using a use. movie magic. Yeah, obviously it doesn't shoot an actual beam, but the, Can't be perfect. the core lights up and you'd be able to look at this really close on screen and not be taken out of the film by it looking like it was something that was just cheap background piece. This so, is, so you say like a hero piece is up close, people are gonna see that. So in the background, they would make things that were probably plastic or something like that, that would be used by lesser characters that maybe wouldn't be you know, right up front. Right, right, depending on how the piece was going to be used, uh, they, they may designate something a stunt piece, which would generally mean that it was lighter weight or you may be able to actually hit somebody with it without hurting them, depending on what the needs of the stunt were. And then you'd have background pieces that were made maybe to be in a holster or to be held by somebody in the background that's not gonna be seen close up on screen. Uh, and the, the variety of things then tell the prop department, okay, this we need to make look really good. This, it just needs to look like there's a gun there. How many that's of these would they have made for a movie? Uh, it depends on how many characters they needed to show up close at one time, but not a lot. Not a lot. Yeah, there'd be a lot more background or stunt pieces than there would hero oh, pieces. I had one of these, I'd get attention at the DMV, wouldn't I? <laughs> yeah, so if you're if you are into prop collecting, when you know you're looking at a hero piece, you know you're looking at something that would have been used probably by a lead actor or at least an actor that was going to be shown very close up In on screen. In this case, the lead actor would have been Greg Evigan? Or, uh, or, no, no or, close, Vin or, Diesel. Or, or, yeah, I mean, they, they get mistaken for each other all the time. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, but this would have been the villain's piece, so, so Riddick wouldn't have used this particular piece, but he would have been the lead actor in those films. And so who comes up with the initial design for something like this? Uh, generally speaking, there'd be some kind of pre-visualization department that would do concept art, that would come up with concepts and then take them to the director and the director will say, I want that. They'll go out and they'll build that. The director will then say, yeah, that works or no, go back to the drawing board. Uh, sometimes you do get prototype pieces that are made, uh, but eventually the director gets something in, in his hands that he likes and that goes on screen. And, and, and it's obviously, you know, very, very detailed. So are there people that that's what their job is? They just specialize in making these sorts of pieces? Oh, yeah, absolutely. There, there are craftsmen that anything that you see on the screen, there's somebody that specializes in that, whether it be weapons, whether it be costumes, whether Table it clothes. be set design. Uh, they're not only people that specialize in those things, they, are, are, they have their own guilds, they have their own unions and they have their own awards. And so to make something like this work on screen, you're gonna have the physical prop, you're gonna have somebody who's gonna put in the digital effects to make a beam come out or whatever's gonna happen with it. You've got someone who's gonna design the sound for it. So, that, I mean, it takes a lot to get a movie together to get something, I and mean, not the movies that we show, but, but a lot of movies, they have to do a lot of work to make something look really, really good and, and real on screen. And that's not to mention the actors that have to actually make it look convincing that they're right. using something real. And, and the director right. has to tell them what he wants, and, and it's just, it's a whole, in, Involved process that when we see it on the screen, it never really occurs to us how much work has actually gone into this. So when you see a movie and it, and it looks good, that's what happened. All of these people got together, they all worked together, and they created something great 
for the screen. So, well, you know, this is actually, tonight's a pretty good movie, so let's get back to the movie here on Nightmare Theater. Good evening, Dr. Hidaka. Dr. Doctor, could you answer a few questions? Do you know what General no, Lawrence Pratt I'm sure General Dean did speak Attention, to him, did you, sir? Please. Will Dr. Hidaka, yeah, arriving on Pan American Just Flight 819, please report right now, to the desk for a message. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Hidaka. Dr. Hidaka, 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 Hello, Hidaka speaking. Why, of course. I'm practically on my way. That was Professor Morase in Hokkaido. Gummer was seen there by a number of reliable witnesses. In Hokkaido? Yes, we leave immediately. Yes, sir. The scout planes have not yet been able to locate Gamera, who is now definitely known to be on or near Hokkaido. Please stay tuned for continuing announcements and bulletins. It's dreadful, we will isn't it? Evacuation Where's Toshio? In which bed? Will not be activated yes, he's had quite an evening. We all have. Necessary. scared you, but he's gone. Did you feel that tremor? What's so unusual? We have them all the time here. Yeah, but not that rough. Ah. Uh. I spotted Gamera. Uh, yes, he's headed toward the geothermal installation. Oh, something must be wrong. I'm getting nothing but a high frequency noise. Another tremor. What's going on? What is it? An earthquake. Or oh, a steam explosion. Good evening, Good evening. Captain. I'm Dr. Hidaka of Tokyo University. How do you do? I'm Kyoko Yamamoto, do do, his assistant. How do you do? And who is this? Oh, I'm Ayogi, Nito I'm Press. I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to leave. The press is barred. Captain, just a moment. Uh, perhaps you could make an exception, Captain, in the case of Mr. Ayogi here. I feel he can make a worthwhile contribution to our efforts here. Uh -huh. He's been with us from the start, and I value his opinion very highly. Very well, sir. You can stay. Thank you. Explain the situation. Yes, at 1930 hours, Gamora destroyed the lighthouse at Erima here. Then he disappeared. But then, within the last 10 minutes, he was spotted near the geothermal power plant by aerial reconnaissance. Geothermal power plant? Uh, allow me to explain, Doctor. In a volcanic area such as this, there are many natural steam vents, or fumaroles, pouring out steam at about a thousand degrees. This tremendous natural energy has been harnessed to generate electricity. I see. Then there is superheated vapor at a thousand degrees issuing from the ground there. Exactly, sir. Excuse me, Dr. Hidaka. Steam that hot could kill a person instantly, could yes. it not? Then why can't we use that steam to destroy Gamera? I don't think it would work, Captain. You mustn't forget that atomic bomb generated far greater heat. Mm. And yet Gamera was able to survive. Uh, Dr. Hidaka, what is there that could stop Gamera then? Don't know. What's the maximum output of that yeah. 350,000 kilowatts. 350,000. It might just work. Hmm. Red Scout calling Red Leader. Red Scout calling Red Leader. This is Red Leader. All units ready to attack. Stand by. Over. They are ready to attack now, Dr. Hidaka. Captain, please hold off the attack for a while. Let's try my plan first. Yes, sir.
Ah, Doctor, we're ready, sir. Yes, you're ready, Doctor. Look, look, you're getting close to the wires. Ready, close all circuits. Stand by for signal for full discharge. Look, it didn't even slow down. Yes, this was a mistake. Captain, you'd better give the order to attack. Captain. Open fire! Like he's eating it. Yes, he is. Captain, call off the attack. He's invulnerable, don't you see? Yes, sir. But what? Evacuate the area. At least all of the civilians. And arrange for a car at once. I must consult with Professor Morase urgently. Me. Good. actually ingested the fire? Yes. Hmm. Well, though legends of fire-breathing monsters like the Chimera and dragons have persisted through the ages, still it's astounding to discover such a creature really exists. Yes, it is. Is Gamera really invulnerable, Professor? That I don't know. I've made one conclusion. Well, what? Obviously, his metabolism is not like ours. It is not only conceivable, but entirely likely that his cell structure differs radically from known life forms. For instance, silicon or metallic elements replacing carbon in his tissues. Precisely. Hmm. And that would explain his fire eating and his invulnerability to electric shock, heat and concussion. Yes, I agree with you completely, Professor, but that doesn't bring us any nearer to a solution, does it? This pattern is very peculiar. They look like waves and yet I don't think they... Yes, <sighs> still they're obviously symbols of some sort. I don't think they're rhythmic enough for waves. Doctor, it would be very useful if we could decipher this. It's no use, sir. Our weapons do not really slow him down. Nothing short of an atom bomb will do any good. You're right. Put me close to General Yoto Bacic. Yes, sir. We understand your problem. And we will do everything we can. You can be assured of it. Thank you. We have just received a request from General Yotobashi for the use of our missiles. Up until now, every armament that we have provided them hasn't done any good. Our missiles? But that means getting approval of our allies. Mr. Secretary, have you consulted the President on these decisions? I have, and he has given me complete authority to implement any moves that we may take. General Arnold, get to it. Thank you, sir. 
Now, gentlemen, I think we'd better order in some lunch. We're apt to be here for some time. If you don't mind, Senator. Good evening, Professor Morase. Good evening. Situation about the same? Yes, sir. It's about to be changed any moment, though. The Americans are going to attack Gamera with nuclear missiles. Oh. A message from General Dean, sir. The American missiles are ready. Good. Clear the area. No, wait. Listen. The missiles won't do any good. It's more likely they'll serve as a source of energy. All right, if you say so. But what we do instead, Doctor? Sir? Yes? What is it? We've completed the evacuation, sir. Except for patrol units. Very good. Carry on. Professor Morase, what can we do? I don't know, since our most powerful weapons are useless. Dr. Hidaka, do you have any ideas? What? It's not even an idea, just a thought that occurred to me. We assume Gamera is invulnerable, obviously with a great deal of justification. But Gamera is vulnerable to cold. Remember, he was frozen in the ice until the bomb released him. Yes, of course, we must devise some means of freezing Gamera. Dr. Hidaka, Professor, the army may have the answer. Our scientists have developed a freezing bomb to use in fires in nuclear reactors. Captain, you mean the army has a bomb that will freeze things? Yes, though it's still in the experimental stage. I believe we can use it, although there is one serious drawback. The uh, gases that they use in this as a refrigerant dissipate in 10 minutes. I see. Hmm. Still, these bombs, are there enough for our purpose? I believe there's an adequate supply, sir. This may be the answer. There isn't too much time. Do you suppose you can arrange it? It's urgent. I believe so, sir, yes. I'll get started on it immediately. This is Night Watch Patrol. Camera is now leaving power plant, heading for mountains. It should be easier out there. Yes, it should. The planes will be able to attack from all sides. Commander is now on Chishima Reach, heading for Devil Spring area. Roger. That's a big resort area. We have to attack now, before he gets there. Hurry, forget the bumps. Yes. Have your attention, please. The effect of the freezing bomb doesn't last very long. Ten minutes, which means that your work has to be completed within that time. So everyone, please remember, when you plant the dynamite, be quick, but be careful. We won't get another chance. Thank you and good luck. Shall I give the signal, Doctor? Please. You're right. His movements are getting slower. Look, a bomb is doing the trick. Dr. Hidaka, almost a minute is gone. Right, thanks. Come, Doctor. On the double! Camera's beginning to move. Do they have enough time left to plant that dynamite? How much time? Only three minutes. It's only one minute, Captain. Right. Clear out! Take cover! Hurry! Watch your fuses! Let's get over here! On the double! Hurry up! Come on! Over out! Hey, watch your fuses! 30 seconds! Ten minutes are nearly up now. That 
That's it. The time's up, Doctor. I know. Stand by. Yes, sir. Don't, Yoko. Don't worry. We're all ready. Fire! He's on his back. Luckily. We've got him now, huh? Yes, because with Gamera, as with any other turtle, once he's on his back, he can't get up again. We're very lucky that your freezing bomb has worked as well as it did. Dr. Doc, I think we've done it. Dr. Hey! 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 Doc, it looks like your plan has succeeded. Yes. And in a month or so from now, he'll be just another zoological specimen. Uh-huh. He's putting his legs and head back in his shell. He knows his leg, that's what you call turning turtle. That's it. Now I understand the pattern, Professor Moratti. Those lines are meant to represent clouds, you see. A primitive but graphic attempt to show that camera can fly. Gentlemen, Gamera must be stopped. God knows where he'll strike next. So far, the American weapons have been completely ineffective and the Japanese radar systems offer barely enough warning to evacuate the civilian populations. We must now work as one cohesive unit with one objective, creating a plan to destroy Gamera before he destroys civilization. General Arnold. Thank you, sir. Both Dr. Hadaka and Dr. Morass are convinced that Gamera is continually on the hunt for food. There is some chemical substance in our fuel that it needs to exist. Possibly the same chemical substance it consumed over 200 million years ago. In the beginning, in the Earth's atmosphere, there was less than a small part of 1% of oxygen that we, with lungs, need to live. The other creatures existed on the sustenance of sulfur compounds in their seething earth. Now, as oxygen increased in the world's atmosphere, living things started to develop lungs. Now, Gamera is of the prior period, possibly the last survivor. This all came within the radii of our microscopes, but the existence of Gamera is living proof that they were not all single-cell creatures. Do you mean it literally eats fire? Yes. The beast actually eats fire. That's it's incredible. incredible. This may explain why he's most destructive when he's unable to satisfy his ravenous appetite and least destructive when he's gorging himself at some oil refinery or fuel reserve. Now, that may be the key to any plan that we come up with. If we can keep camera in one location long enough 
we may gain the time we need. Thank you, General. This conference is now open to discussion. I recognize the representative from the Soviet Union. I've been authorized by my government to offer complete cooperation. Our nation's resources, scientists, and armed forces are at your disposal. The American ambassador. The United States government takes the identical position. To save time, gentlemen, I move for unanimous agreement. With all those in favor, say aye. 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 So be it. Here's another one from Paris. Gamma has been sighted all over the world, but only in the air. Yes. Apparently his experience with the freezing bomb frightened and disturbed him. Yes. But what happens when he gets hungry again? See who it is. Yes, sir. Come in, please. How do you do? I'm Nobuyo Sakurai, and this is my brother Tosio. How do you do? Good afternoon, sir. And I am the doctor's assistant. These are the Sakurais from the Arima Lighthouse doctor. I asked them to come when I heard that they were in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I see. Not exactly. You see, our home was destroyed. My. They're rebuilding everything now. And since there is no place nearby where we can stay, why, Tosio and I have come to visit our uncle here in Tokyo. Oh, yes, I understand. Yes, but as long as you are here, Toshio, you must miss the sightseeing. See that? Right there? That is the Tokyo Tower. Dr. Hidaka? Yes? Is Gamera going to return? Well, let us hope that he doesn't return here. He's very dangerous. Gamera will save my life. I hope he's all right. He doesn't mean to be dangerous. He's just so big and clumsy, that's all. He goes overboard when it comes to turtles. I like turtles, that's all. I bet Gamera's lonesome too, wherever he is. <laughs> Even a turtle doesn't like to be alone. If people were kind to Gamera, I bet he could be trained to be nice and quiet, like other turtles. I wonder where he is now. Good night, Toshio. I think Dr. Hidaka was very nice to explain everything, don't you? And at least you realize now how dangerous Gamera really is. Listen, I think tomorrow you and I should go sightseeing. Hmm? Uh-huh. Tosho? Uh, sound asleep already. Good night. Little turtle. Hello and welcome back. We hope you're enjoying Gamera the Invincible. As movies go, it's really a bit better than most of the films that El Sapo finds us. You know what? I'm enjoying it, boss. However, I do not understand why Gamera is destroying everything in his path. No one seems to have done anything to him. He's just walking around, stomping on things and eating things. And I wonder why. Well, wonder no more, El Sapo. I've pulled a few strings and I've managed to secure an exclusive interview with Gamera. He's written a book and he finally wants to tell his story and set the record straight. Is he just gonna screech and scream like a lunatic? Probably, that's pretty much how he communicates. But we're in luck. Here at Von Dorn Enterprises, we've perfected the Verbalizer 6000. It's a translating computer. So we will be able to have a con conversation with Gamera and try to understand his hopes, his dreams, his fears, his desires. So without further ado, we take you to Gamera, live, via satellite. El Sapo, flip that switch and it'll link the satellite in the Verbalizer 6000. <laughs> Mr. Gamera, can you hear me? Uh, uh yeah, I can, Baron. Uh, th thank you for having me. Well, thank you for joining us today. We're, we're big fans of your work. On my left is Mittens, and on my right is... Never mind. And we have so many questions for you. Yeah, like why are you such a destructive crab in this movie? Who said that? Sorry, that was my loudmouth manservant El Sapo. Pay no attention to him. Oh, well, I don't mind answering him. First, my friend, I'm not a crab, I'm a turtle. Get that right, please. I'll respect you if you respect me. Increase the peace. One love, right? It just seems like you're in a very bad mood for no real reason. El Sapo, I was in a bad mood. I was worshipping at the Temple of Anger back then, but you have to understand, I was asleep, minding my own business, 
and suddenly someone drops an atomic bomb on me. I hadn't even had my coffee yet. And well, I guess my dark side got out and I'm deeply ashamed of my behavior. Hey man, we've all had days like that before. Why one time Mittens and I busted up the whole breakfast bar at the Easy Sleep Motel in Billings, Montana because they ran out of Senka and Cocoa Crunch cereal. I was so mad. Oh, you feel me then, man. You know exactly what I mean. Anger is an energy, my friend, and I filled up on it. Well, it does look like you went on quite the literal rampage. You, you destroyed several cities, in fact. Oh, I did. I was so lost, man. So lost. When I was destroying all those cities and eating all that energy, you know what I was really doing? killing thousands of people, causing billions of dollars in damages, irreparably destroying ecosystems. No, man, I was destroying myself and eating my feelings, you oh, know? So, so it's all about you then, huh, Gamera? Sappho, that's enough. Gamera is our guest. <sighs> See, I was eating my feelings because as a turtle, I never knew how to come out of my shell. I kept everything inside, man, inside. Yeah. I guess I did kill a lot of people. You got me there. Listen, this is a judgment-free zone. Three people died while watching this show last week, in fact. Thank you for saying that, Baron. It's good to be among friends. Those people you killed probably had lots of friends. What kind of interview is this? I, I apologize for him. He talks when he should listen. Do you mind if we take a break? Let's get back to the film while I counsel El Sapo on proper decorum. Let's return to Gamera the Invincible here on Nightmare Theater. Invincible means stupid, right? What did he say? Cut the feed, cut the feed. Uh, good evening. We are fairly certain that the disturbances earlier today have been caused by Gamera's return. You mean he's in the Tokyo area? Yes, unfortunately. But knowing that he is in Tokyo gives us a chance to carry out the uh, United Nations uh, Plan Z for his uh, disposal. Yes. Will the projectionist uh, show the film, please? This is Oshima Island in Tokyo Bay, a dormant volcano used at present for a space installation and weather observatory. It is here that Plan Z will be carried out as soon as arrangements are completed. In the meantime, let us hope Gamera stays where we can find him and does no further damage. This is Haneda Control, interference on the line. This is Haneda Control. We have lost our contact. We cannot reach you. Do not attempt to land. There it is! Look!
Bradshaw Bulletin. Bradshaw Bulletin. Gamma is attacking. Proceed to shelter immediately. Proceed to shelter. Gamma is attacking. Gamma is attacking. <laughs> Toshio, come and help me, please. Come on. I can't do it all by People myself. Toshio, did you hear me? I need some leaders. help. Do not attempt to leave on your Toshio. own. Only authorized rescue and fire Kamara. equipment and personnel will be passed. Don't do that! If you still have Listen running water, to me. fill as do many large that. containers as possible so you have a supply on hand for drinking and smoking. Even five minutes. You think Toshio Ichiro? I think he went to the river. The river? O'Neill speaking. Yes, Dr. Docker. Yes, sir. I understand. We'll try. Listen, everybody. They will be ready on Oshima Island for another 24 hours. That means we've got to keep rolling gas down there till the supply runs out. All right. Everybody ready now? Let them roll! Right, right, folks. Here go!
Это бой он That's all. Uh-huh. Well, you saw him all right, didn't you? Is he you? hurt, sir? No, he's all right. There, now go home, will you? <laughs> he wanted to see Governor. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome back. Uh, we hope you're enjoying the film. We have Gamera back on the line, and we'd like to continue our interview. But first, El Sapo, do you have something to say? Yes. I'm sorry if I offended you, Gamera. It's not your fault. All those people were sitting in their homes, minding their own business when you destroyed their cities and their livelihoods. Sapo! Uh, it's not really an apology, but I'll take it, I guess. But let's talk about something positive. Tell us about the kids you saved. Oh, yeah, Toshio, Toshio. Oh, I remember him, you know, I, I saved his life when he fell. Well, to be fair, you did knock down the building he was in, and causing him to fall, it's not like he just fell off a building and you swept in like some superhero. Sapo, I am warning no, you. No, no, Baron, that's a fair point. I, I only saved his life because I knew he loved turtles. Yeah, he was a real weird kid. So whatever happened to Toshio, tell us that. I, I can't talk about that, man. Oh, man. Oh, Toshio. Toshio. Now look what you did, Sapo. Uh, uh, tell us about your book, Gamera. Oh, Tosho, how many times did I ask you not to make me angry? How many times? I'm so sorry, Tosho. <clears throat> so, so your book? Give me a moment. Oh, yeah, my book. My book. Well, you know, things really started to fall apart for me after Toshio died. I was at my lowest ebb. Sure, I got jobs fighting other so-called monsters in a series of movies. They called me the friend to all children. They did call me that once, remember. But were they were there for me when I hurt my leg in a bar fight with Barago and I couldn't work for a few months? And I struggled with my addiction to turtle wax when I had my power shut off. But I got evicted and lived in the sewer when the bank repossessed my fast <laughs> Can you imagine that, boss? This is this fat guy slathering himself in turtle wax. El Sapo, don't laugh. I can't help it. It's just so funny. I can't just picture a boss. He'd be oiled up like a big old fat Hulk Hogan with nobody do it. Do not <laughs> laugh at him. <sighs> no, let him laugh. Fools often laugh when nothing is funny, so laugh it up. Thanks, I will. <laughs> <sighs> See, I have escaped the captivity of my negativity. It doesn't bother me anymore. I had some dark times, but I came out of them. Now, now I like the title of your book, Coming Out of My Shell, How I Beat Rage and Depression and How You Can Too. Now, now tell us about that. See, we're all in our own shells, man. No, I'm not in a shell. Will you be quiet? Whenever I got upset or confused, I'd draw myself into my shell and hide. Or I'd fly away, one of those two things. Hiding or running away. I'd probably destroy a city or two in the process. Ah, so lost, man. Just so lost. Well, well what did you do? So I went off to find myself. I went off to live in the mountains of India. I switched 
to a real food, gluten-free, vegan diet, I decided to let love rule. I grew huge fields of flowers. I laid down in those flowers. I found paradise in those flowers. Whoa, flowers, paradise. Man, if that's your idea of paradise, I wish I had a lawnmower. Sappho! My friend, my friend. Okay, just a minute. Let me realign my chakras. Deep breath. Two. Deep breath. Three. Deep breath. Calm energy. Positive. Negative energy. Deep breathing now. Breathing calms me down. My breath, you know, used to destroy cities. I bet it still does. I can smell it from here, man. Sappho! No, let him talk. I vowed not to let the words of fools get to me. The old me would have flown from where I am right now to where you are, and I would have stomped your entire city flat just to get to you, my friend. By the way, uh, what city are you in right now? Maybe I could just visit you, Big Mouth. All the self-help books talk about coming back after a relapse. Now, now there's no need for that. Your book is going to do a lot of people a lot of good. Yeah, 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 right. It's going to be in the five for a dollar bin at the truck stop in two weeks. Sappo! I again apologize. So, so tell me, Gamera, what are you doing these days? Deep breath. Not going to react. Positive vibes lead to positive lives. On Mothra and I have a small house out on a farm. We breed and raise teacup chihuahuas. <laughs> we also sell matching tie-dyed sweaters. You and your dog can dress alike. How cute is that? <laughs> Who wants to dress like a dog, man? That does it! I'm coming after you, man! Yeah, yeah, turtle boy. I bet you can't even get your big old butt in the air anymore. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Remember, he's a fool, Gamera. He just likes to talk. Don't the ancient mystics say wise men talk because they have something to say and ignorant fools talk because they have to say something? That's, that's in my book, actually. Thank you for sticking up for me there, boss. Well, well, Gamera, we thank you for your time. We know you're busy. Yeah, right. A lot of sweaters to make, huh, fat boy? Sappo! No problem. Uh, say, Sappo, uh, what's your address? I'd like to personally bring you a signed copy of my book. And Oh, and Baron, maybe you and Mittens could kind of leave town that day. Maybe even get out of the state uh, so he could read it alone. Well, well now, that's all right. Let's, uh, let's just get back to Gamera the Invincible here on Nightmare Theater. Dr. Hidaka should be at Oshima by now. Yes, and we'll be ready here as soon as they need us. Good. Let's hope our plan to get Gamera to Oshima works. A young lady to see you. Excuse Mr. me, Mr. Kurai, what are you doing here? Please, it's Toshio. At 10, we were supposed to evacuate Hachiochi, but Toshio's gone. He's been missing all day. Yes, sir. We have just finished unloading. Hey, why do you want to stop? Take it up to the warehouse. Right. It is on its way. All right, get down out of there. What's that? What's going on? We just found a stowaway, sir. A stowaway? Boy, it's Toshio. You shouldn't be here. I'm sorry. I came here to see Gamera, that's all. Gamera? Hmm. 
You can stay, Toshio. But you have to behave, understand? Mm -hmm. I'll take care of Toshio, doctor. You hungry? Starving. It's time oh, to begin. Good. Is everything ready here? Yes, doctor. But, but Dr. Daka, are you sure the scheme of yours will lure Gamera to Oshima Island? Practically certain. Assuming, of course, his mm. behavior pattern remains unchanged. You may begin your tank operation. Everything's ready on Oshima Island. Yes, as soon as it's ready. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Yes, that's fine. Goodbye. Mr. Kura, good news. Toshio's safe on Oshima Island. Oh, my. Toshio's all yes. right. Phase two can begin. The ships are here. Yes, as soon as you are ready. You are? Begin immediately. Mm. Thank you, Doctor. All right, General, they're ready. Thank you. Sergeant, proceed. Squad, horse! Open fire! It's going to work. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you, Naboyo. Oh. Hello, Dr. Yadaka. It works. Gamera is following the path of fire to Oshima. So we did it. He's on his way here. Do you see Gamera? Yes. No, not yet. Just the fire. Thank you, Professor. For heaven's sake. Typhoon warning. Doctor, listen. Attention. Typhoon warning. A small typhoon originating east of Otori Island has changed course and is approaching the Tokyo area. All shipping is warned to take shelter immediately. High winds, rain squalls. Doctor Yudaka, who is responsible for us? Take all necessary I think we're all right once Gamera is here. There is a threat of volcanic activity and... Gamera! Gamera is right! It is advised that everyone assure themselves of an adequate water and food supply. Get your first aid materials. No! Gamera! It's a trap! Get back! You're in danger! That's a typhoon. Can't anything be done, Doctor? Might I suggest, Doctor, that we use some of the fuel from Plan Z. It's not practical. Why not? Because if we did, there wouldn't be enough fuel left over for the plan itself. See? Let me go! Don't put out the fire! 
Doctor, listen! Oh, what's the meaning of this? Are you insane? Mr. Ayagi, what are you doing? Listen to me. You both are not. If Gamera sees that, he'll come back, won't he? You're right, Ayagi. Men, light the fire! Hurry! He goes and there's nothing we can do about it. And so close to success, too. Ah, rotten luck. the plane. Probably Professor Morassi. Yes. Ten minutes and counting. The eruption has subsided, sir. Not even a live volcano could keep me away today. Yes, sir. Tighten your belt. No boil! Good morning, Professor Morassi. Did you have a no boil flight? Dosu, you had me scared half to death. Call me later. Right now we got to hurry. Or else we miss everything. Come Five on. minutes and counting. Where do you see this? Look. It's incredible. Professor Morassi. Ah, Dr. Hidaka. Everything's going well, it seems. Very well, indeed. Excellent. Stand by, please. The count is now 10 seconds and holding. All set? Yes, sir. Good. Ready ignition and start off step two. Begin step two.
Open hatches. Flares out. Hatches open. Flares out. Ready with the capsule? Close capsule. Activate energizer. Stand by. Resume count. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Zero. This is United Nations Radio. At this very moment, the Plan Z rocket with Gamera aboard is starting on its long journey to Mars. Plan Z, a triumph of scientific achievement, is the result of the combined efforts of all the nations of the world. Thus, through international cooperation, a major threat to civilization has been averted. Well, Joe, you did. Well, the three of us saw the beginning and the finish, eh? Uh, only I didn't get a picture. <laughs> Where's he going, Dr. Hidaka? He's on his way to Mars. Oh, I guess that he'll still be lonely, eh? I think so, Dr. Hidaka. But when I grow up, I'm going to be a scientist like you. And then I'll go to Mars in a rocket. <laughs> I see. Camera, sayonara. Camera. 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 Man, that was some ending, wasn't it? Gamera walked into a trap and they blasted him into outer space. It was really a great example of global cooperation, wasn't it, boss? All those countries set aside their petty squabbles and differences and worked together to get that big stupid idiot Gamera to walk into that trap. <laughs> yes, it was a fine example of people who disagree with each other, even people who compete with each other, working together to achieve a common goal. It's great when we can set aside our differences in order to focus on something that we all want to accomplish. I've not seen cooperation like that since every fast food place in the tri-state area worked together to ban you. Look, 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 look. The signs say no shirt, no shoes, no service. It says nothing about pants. History will vindicate me. They should have blasted you into space instead of Gamera. I wouldn't mind visiting outer space. Your day is coming, pal. But until that glorious day, I guess I'm stuck with you here. Amen. Thanks, boss. Sure. Uh, uh, so what do we have on tap for next week, El Sapo? We have this, boss. Santa Claus conquers the Martians. Santa sets up a fantastic automatic toy factory on Mars. Martian leader battles the wicked Bodar in a desperate effort to save Santa, the wise man of Mars. 900 years old. The Battle of the Toys, when Martian kids and Earth kids join Santa to battle the bad guys of Mars. Space Age fun, you'll be out of this world when Santa Claus conquers the Martians.
Speaking of things I wish we could blast into space, that movie would be a prime candidate. See, can we go over Mitten's breakfast suggestions now? It might be a good time. No. And until next time, may all your dreams be nightmares. Thank you.